Hey guys, this video is going to be about polymers, specifically condensation, polymerization. So before we begin, what actually is a polymer? Well, a polymer is made from something called a monomer. In fact, many monomers go on to react and form a polymer. So what actually is a monomer? Well, a monomer is a small molecule, which can just be represented by these dots. In, in solution, for example, in a beaker and these are free flowing moving around. What they can then do is react with each other to form a chain like structure. So we have one there, another one added, so on and so on until we have a long long chain, you know, almost looking a bit like a snake. So that's how they kind of look at microscopic levels when you're looking at the individual monomers making up the chain. But what do they look like on the large scale, you know, if you look in, looked into a pot and you could actually see how they're arranged, well, it's not gonna just be this one long squiggly chain like this, a bit like a snake. In fact, it's just gonna be a giant ball of mess like that. They can wrap around each other, they can tangle up, there are some interactions between each chain and things like that. I won't go into specifics, but you can sometimes have solvent molecules trapped in there, making this ball smaller like that, or large like that. Effectively, it depends what the conditions are. So that's what a polymer looks like and what it's made of. But what actually are monomers and the different types of monomer that make the different types of polymerization? Well, condensation, known as step growth more commonly, is called a condensation polymerization because there is elimination of a small molecule, such as water, hence condensation, or HCl, you know, any other small molecule can also come off. They are named poly and then the bond or linkage that connects those different monomers. For example, we have polyester, so we have a polymer with ester bonds. Polyamide, we have a polymer with amide bonds and polyurethane. You know, there are just a couple of examples, there are loads out there and you Google it, you'll find some. So, Addition polymerization, which I'm not going to talk about in too much detail, I'll do that on a different video. They utilize alkenes and the C to C double bond specifically in the alkene. They are called polymonomer, the monomer that makes up the polymer. For example, we have polystyrene, so the monomer in this case is styrene. We have polyethene, so we just have ethene molecules, or polypropene, so we have propene monomers. Why are polymers important? Well, Polymers, which had their kind of industrial boom as such in kind of the 60s and 70s in that area, they make up pretty much everything you see nowadays. Most things people would call plastics. <clears throat> so maybe at school, at home, you have a plastic table, plastic chairs. Some of your clothes are made from polyesters and stuff like that. You know, everything around you, you know, a water bottle, a pen pot, something like that. Um, coatings, for example, paints, they, they usually utilize polymers in some way, shape or form. And this is a bit of an issue when it comes to climate change and fossil fuels because uh, a lot of these are carbon based which come from fossil fuels and that, like I said that can be an issue as we are starting to run out. So things like the common plastics and everything that we use in our day to day lives could run out. But never mind that for now, let's start to understand the chemistry behind them. Like I said, condensation, polymerization in this video. So. If we take a polyester, like I said, poly, and then the type of bond. So here's a ester bond just here. And there's a couple of different ways we can make it. Well, as you know, we have a carboxylic acid and an alcohol group can come together to make this ester bond. Now, the monomers can take several different forms. If we call the carboxylic functional group A and the alcohol functional group B, then we could call this monomer here, an AA monomer for short, you know, so we don't have to draw it out every single time. We could call this one here BA, as you've got alcohol group on the left and carboxylic acid group on the right, or we could call this bottom monomer here, which is a dialcohol, we could call it BB. Just a shorthand way that some people will use <clears throat> when mentioning the, the monomers and the repeat unit, which I'll discuss later on. So if we take a typical condensation reaction, so here we have um, 
a BA and a BA monomer reacting together, or they can react together in such a way to form this ester bond a bit like this. And this is what the uh, dimer will look like. But what we can then do is we can add more. We can keep adding another monomer and then another and another and another and another and just keep going and going and going until it's all used up. And we could have a long, long chain, you know, which monomer is only this long. We could have loads and loads and loads forming that polymer chain that I spoke about at the beginning of the video. But how do we represent that? Because we don't want to be drawing the whole thing out if it's, say, made of a thousand monomers, do we? That would take forever. Well, it's something called the repeat unit. That's how we represent it. Effectively, what you do is you refine, uh, you find the repeating section <clears throat> of the polymer. In this case, this is one way that we could show it. So, if we had a hundred chains, then if we if we notice this section here, for all of them would be the same because that would, if we ignore that hydrogen, that would branch off and go on, if we ignore that hydrogen, that would branch off and join to another monomer, and that's one repeat unit. And we can draw it like that. And n at the bottom here denotes that it happens n times. So we would have a reaction, um, we would add n monomer units, and it would go on and form um, n of these repeat units. Like I said, it's condensation because we get a small molecule come off, such as water, when these two monomers combine. Now, let's look at polyamides, for example. That's another type of condensation that can happen. <clears throat> so we're taking, uh, well, again, that's effectively another BA molecule. In this case, um, B stands for the NH2 group and A stands for the um, acyl group coming off instead of carboxylic acid and alcohol. But a similar reaction occurs and we form this amide bond. Now, like I said, is a condensation reaction because we have a small molecule that comes off, in this case HCl. What would the repeat unit of this be? Well, the repeat unit of this would be what's displayed in front of you. Because we can see we have a repeating section like this. Again, if I did what I did earlier, ignore the hydrogen, that would go off and continue the chain. Ignore one of those two hydrogens, that would go off and continue the chain once again. Looking a bit like that, you have an NH here. So that section is what repeats, and we say it repeats n times. If n monomers are used, we could refer to the n as an x or something like that. It just shows that it's happening a lot of times. Also, one other thing to note, it doesn't have to be square brackets. You'll sometimes see them with curly brackets like that. It just really depends how your textbook or teacher likes to lay things out. Both are absolutely fine. Now, what happens if there are two types of monomers? So, so far we've seen the same monomer, a BA reacting with a BA to form something like this, BA, BA. Now, what happens if we have something um, carboxylic acid group like this one below, which is AA and something that's BB and the chain in the middle, here we have a benzene ring and here we just have um, C3, etc. Well, <clears throat> same thing happens, they just react to form an ester bond and the repeat unit will look a bit like what's down below, again using the N. Now I've specified here that we've used N of this monomer and N of this monomer in a one-to-one -one ratio, meaning that we have, like I said, N of these repeat units, but also we have 2N minus 1 water molecules coming off, making it our condensation reaction. So that's all for today on condensation polymerization. In most specifications, there isn't too much to know about this. Know how to draw the repeat unit, <clears throat> know how to see what the reaction will create, such as a polyester or polyamide. Know how to name them, like I said, poly and then the bond or linkage. If you found this video helpful, then please share it with your friends. They might <clears throat> benefit from it as well. Subscribe for more and like the video. Thank you.